Bang, Neves Knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife, Kara, is at work. She should be off here pretty soon. And today we are checking out a sharpening guide for basically freehand. It slips right on the blade of a knife. You can see I already marked where to put it on this knife. And then you use it as a guide. Now, I've tested it out before in the past. It works pretty good for kitchen knives and stuff like that. There are certain blade shapes that it can still work on, but you might have to do a little bit of free handing to like, especially like on big belly knives. It works best on knives that kind of angle down, kind of like a kitchen knife or um, lots of spider coats. Spider coats will work good. Um, and there are a lot of blade shapes that do work good with it, but there are some that's just a little bit frustrating to get to the very top of, uh, or by the tip, basically. Let's get into it, and we, uh, we'll see how this, this thing works. So it's sold on Amazon as, for only a few dollars, as basically like a, a kitchen knife um, guide or sharpening guide. So we're going to try a couple different stones. I do not recommend using diamond stones with it though. I recommend water stones or um, aluminum oxide stones, possibly ceramic stones. Ceramic stones, eh, I mean, I'm sure they can work just fine, but you will have to put pressure with ceramic or a little bit more. We will start off with some super stones. This is the Nanawa Superstone. I believe this one's like 400 grit. It's basically just a splash and go stone. So we're just gonna use water. Takes a little spray. I've done videos on these in the past, but they're not but they're not as aggressive as other stones. So, and the reason why I don't want the stone to be too aggressive is because this is plastic. So even though it is smooth and it's made to slide across the stone, eventually the stone will start getting to it. Now, when you're putting it on, you wanna make sure you don't go like this and put it on because you do have a chance this thing could slip out and hit you in the finger. Always aim it away from you when you are slipping it into place. Now, the line right here, it's, I had already looked at it and set it on the stone, kind of figured out where I wanted it to land because I wanted to make sure I could get to the tip. I'll show you here in a moment. And you want to make sure it doesn't move on you. It's pretty tight, but it can move. And basically, it's sitting just like that and dragging across the stone. I'll get you a few different angles here in just a second. Now, I can recommend it to people that are wanting it for kitchen knives or certain blade shapes. Smaller knives, not so much. The bigger the knife, kind of the better. But this is not a big knife. This is the Real Steel Griffin. And it's about uh, an eight inch knife, three and a half inch blade. So it's not a massive knife or anything. You see, we're already doing a pretty decent job. Let's get another splash. It does slide across the stone pretty good. But now like a diamond stone, the, the diamond stone would start scratching the plastic a lot faster and a lot more heavily. You don't want to, you're not trying to put pressure back here, but it is sitting 
you know, relatively flat by itself. I mean, the weight of the handle will let it drop, but it sits pretty easily. So it's pretty easy to do. Once you get to the tip, you do still have to lift, but if you angle the guide system just right, it, you, you'll get enough room to do that with a lot of blade shapes. Now, some blade shapes, you're going to be able to just do it right on the spine, like a big kitchen knife, which will be really nice. But for folders, you're kind of limited to certain ones. But it can definitely help you learn how to maybe get the feeling down of holding an angle and what it feels like to repeat the same angle. That is definitely for sure. All right, we're looking pretty good. Now let's watch it from the other angle. Kind of just got to push through that that little bit of noise you hear right there that's this rubbing the stone just a little bit i hardly feel it so i'm already scratching the knife and this uh clamp or guide across the stone so but i have to lift to get to the tip anyway so And you see, like, if I was going to use this to, to uh, learn how to hold it, this wouldn't really work from this angle. From this angle it does, but for me, not so much this way. I mean, I guess you, maybe, I don't know. I guess you could, but I feel like I'm a lot more comfortable holding the back of it. The back of this plastic piece rather than the blade but you could get away with it it's actually not doing too bad let's look at her bevel not looking too bad All right, let's knock this burr off. We're just going to do some one and one passes since we have the burr on the other side now. Just going to do it one-handed. Definitely helps somebody who's one-handed. Like I said, you're limited to certain blade shapes, I think. I think big bellies will work fine if it's a big knife. Possibly, but um, but drop points work good. Um, kitchen knives, small knives, not so much. They can as long as it's like a worn cliff or a sheep's foot possibly a drop point but i tried doing the rat two and it wasn't really working out the rat one worked okay so this is this is the rat two i could not get it to work it, probably because it's just too short but i couldn't get it to where i could hit the tip properly like i can almost perfect almost get it all the way but i'm missing the very very tip of it it's getting very close though so it's almost getting it but it likes to shift too 
if you notice how it's kind of shifting let's try this see and then it wants to shift so then you're gonna want it to stay in the same spot every time it's kind of getting it there but you see it's shifting and if I would have made a line it'd be all over the place But I guess you could, let's see if it'll work the other direction now. Eh. Kind of. Yeah, I guess it is working. But, yeah, it's working, but I just, I just feel like it moves a little too much and I'm not uh, very confident. I feel like I could do so much better just freehanding, but I also don't have a problem holding an angle. But I don't feel like I'm getting the very tip, you know, tip. Maybe I am. Let's try another one. Let's see the RET 2. So now the RET 2, I believe, will work. Or rat one, I'm sorry, the rat one should work. Yeah, the rat one works just fine. I just go down the stone, then when I want to get to the tip, I kind of tilt back. So I'm basically just raising my elbow. Letting it rust, raising my elbow. Going down the stone, when I get to the tip, I'm just raising my elbow. So, other side, just raising my elbow. Dragging to just perfectly across. Then once I get towards the tip, I'm raising my elbow. That's it. So, you know, it should work for a lot of knives, but, you know, I, I would imagine if it has too big of a belly, it might not be the best guide. So, you know, something to think about. All right, let's check it out. Oh, yeah. Swipe the blade off. Not too bad. No, and like I said, you can use this guide on... You know, aluminum oxide stones, water stones, um, possibly ceramic. Um, I've, I tried them on the ceramic. The only problem I feel like is that I, I put, you know, I use pressure on my ceramic. So, but you could definitely use them on ceramic. Just not diamond. That's the only thing. Not diamond stones. Let's see how bad it got chewed up. Not too bad. These aren't really aggressive stones. I mean, they, uh, it's not the, t I mean, they're obviously aggressive enough to, to cut the steel. This is 14C28N, so not an extremely hard steel, but I've sharpened M390, no problem on this. But it didn't seem like it really tore it up too bad. Let's check the plastic here. Let me look at it. Okay, so I see a little bit of wear right there. And right there, that's from, you know, the lift when I got to the tip. But not that big of a deal. Finish this thing up, and then I'll give my final thoughts on it.
Okay, final thoughts. It did work. Um, it did sharpen up the knife pretty nicely. Um, I definitely could have spent more time on each stone. And it would probably be sharper, but it's still a good sharp edge. It, um, let's test it. So it's sharp. It's not as sharp as if I would have spent a little bit more time on it. But the point was to show this, not how sharp I can get an edge. It would definitely get sharper if I spent more time on it. Do I like it? Um, I mean, I don't, but I could understand why people would. I mean, it totally would work out for people that are trying to learn how to hold an angle or are just trying to sharpen some knives and don't want to have to worry about learning to hold an angle. Um, the, the downfall is, is some blades aren't going to do as well as others, but then some blades are going to do fantastic, you know, especially like kitchen knives and stuff. I think that's basically how it's sold as like a kitchen knife guide. Um, but it does work good and surprisingly I thought this white part was going to be really sanded down at the end but actually I don't see any wear on that and this is plastic but uh, but I do see a little wear on the edges of the clamp and all it is is just you know it's just compressed so you know like I said you just wedge it in there and it peels itself apart so but there you guys go um if you guys want to check it out, I will try, to, I will find a link and I will put it in the description. Peace.